What's going on, y'all? So let's What's going on, y'all? So we are back again for another episode of Black Ink Crew. Um, this season eight, episode thirteen, basic and predictable. Let's just get down to it, okay? So this episode was kind of cute, but it still wasn't much. Um, Alex is back in the shop. That's cute, okay? Alex, you better than me because um, you know, it just I just never would. A lot of people are better than me on this forgiving type thing. Like, you know, I respect the fact that you um, you want all of a sudden want to apologize or whatever. But would I want to come back and work with you, work for you? No. Okay. But he good. He good. You know, he even had a little client, um, you know, did a little tattoo. He was the only tattoo that was done on this, on this episode. Um, you know, they had a welcome back banner for him and all that stuff. You know, uh, Walt comes in, he's all happy, whatever, for the simple fact that, you know, he's going on a comedy tour. Okay. And the first tour stop is Cleveland. That's Donna's hometown. So of course, Donna is happy and everything. And she was like, bitch, I'm going. And I was like, bitch, if you going, Alex going, and this is going to give him an opportunity to meet her folks and everything. And so, you know, that was that. And, um... Then Puma was convinced to let Crystal back, which you kind of figured that Crystal wasn't going nowhere. He didn't necessarily fire her. Like, you just put her on a little bit of suspension. That's it. Okay, that's what it was. Moving on from that, Sky, she meets up with, um, first of all, Donna put it out there that Tati and um, Jims was in the back at the party. Um, you know, uh, at the Brooklyn shop or whatever, they was back there kissing. And so remember, Tati didn't want nobody to know nothing about this. All right. Not yet. And I'm going to get into some stuff because I'm trying to get through this because I just want to get to the end of this episode because it really pissed me off. And it pissed me off because they both, the, the two people involved both did the same thing to each other. Okay. And I didn't like when she did it to him and I don't like that he's doing it to her, but what goes around comes around. Okay. And, um, you know, so she was in her, Ted got into his feelings about that when he found out and they're going to walk out and I'm sitting here like, okay. And sir, you need to calm that down. That, that was like real pussy, you know, um, Ryan from black ink crew sent over some champagne or whatever. Of course, Donna opening up the stuff. It ain't even for her. It was addressed to Caesar. And like Puma said, this bitch just don't give a shit. I mean, she don't pay taxes. So what? She might as well just go ahead and do what she going to do. Cause you do know opening up people mail that ain't yours. That's a federal offense. Okay. You can go to jail for that shit. You know, um, Sky, she had a little sit down with Caesar to tell him the truth as the reason why she did not come to the opening of, you know, the Brooklyn shop. And that was because she had to shut down her um, secret little closet, her little secret, whatever, the little boutique that she had in Miami, because, you know, the landlord was just basically over her. The landlord said y'all had to get out. Um, and mind you, she wasn't even down there when he just basically evicted them. And so the, um, people that was there had to hurry up and put the stuff in storage or whatever. Um, so they wouldn't take nothing and damage anything. And, you know, she said that this is a problem with businesses. Okay. She said that she was behind on rent a couple of times. And I'm like, all these times that you've been going flying up and down, up and down New York for what? For what? You, we don't really need you on this show at this point because you, I mean, you try to be funny or whatever, but you, you, you stir up a little bit of drama and at this point it's getting tired and it's getting old. Like they don't even have you on that much. So, I mean, just stay down there and focus on that. And this goes to show you that, you know, it's good and well that people are able to open up businesses, but you need to have a bit of knowledge of how businesses work. Okay. You need to know bookkeeping. You need to know accounting. You need to know all of these ins and outs to get your return on investments. What works, what don't. The supply, demand, the economics of it all. You need to know business one-on-one. That's why I suggest that anybody try to open up a business, please at least get a you know, basic business book and go over it. Have somebody go over it with you so you can know the basics. Because a lot of businesses, that's just how it goes. A lot of businesses fail when they first open. You know what I'm saying? And so that was what was going on with her. And, you know, she just was saying she feel bad about it because, you know, you got people depending on her. 
and they became like a family just like um black ink was for them and so you know caesar was giving her encouragement you know you just didn't uh go the way that you wanted it just make you come back harder whatever fine cool that was nice she doing this little thing trying to sell some brainstorm <laughs> i will say this that 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 shit when she was up there with q and um Mike, that was kind of funny, okay? When Q and... Because it was funny because of Q and Mike. That's why it was funny because they was flirting with each other. I'm like, go ahead and make a... Um, what is it? A dog pound video, okay? I, I would like to see it. Mike is something kind of cute, okay? He really is. And he like a real gentleman, like, you know, but whatever. That was nice. Um, Moving on from that. <clears throat> They were talking about Kitty. Do she still got feelings for Caesar because she didn't really do anything to Crystal or whatever. And she keep on hanging around with him and all that stuff. It was like, they probably fuck buddies and that's what it is. Y'all got fuck buddies too. So, hey, it is what it is. And like she said, she would have fucked Crystal face up. I don't believe she would have did that much damage, but she probably would have tried. Okay? That's what it was. Um, You know, and she was definitely out of line. Crystal, that bitch. Girl. You know, when we get something new, we always try to show out, okay? And that's what Crystal did. That's what she did. She tried to show out, and it didn't really work the way that she wanted it to. Because at the end of the day, he not going to be with you, okay? He probably going to let you suck his dick with your new jaw, all right? And that's about it. I'm just saying. He probably let like, put a tip in or whatever. But, you know, you Crystal look like the type of bitch that to probably trap a nigga now. Or, or try to trap him. I'm just saying, alleged. But, um, anyway, moving on from that. Puma sat down with uh, uh, Richard Duncan. Not old shit, but Mr. Richard Duncan and his wife, Nikki. And I will say, he do look like he's in a better headspace. Seeing Nikki didn't bother my skin like he usually do. She didn't get on my nerves because she ain't really had nothing negative or anything that was irksome to say. You know, and basically... You know, Richard got his new shop open. I said, Richard, we're not calling him Oh shit. This is the cleanup version. This is the businessman up in here. This is the profession. Now, you're going to use my government name, okay? That's Richard Duncan to you. I said, oh, all right. You know, the baby looking cute, looking healthy, looking nice. And um, look at all of her mama, okay? All of her mama. But, um, you know, Puma really wanted them to come together and if the fact that it worked out between him and Caesar, they had their long standing beef and they was able to work that out. He wanted the same to happen with Puma, I mean, Richard and Caesar. As I was with Richard, I understand that because I'm that type of person that will always reach out to somebody and you just be like, damn, can I, can, can, can somebody just reach out to me? You know what I'm saying? And he like, every time we get into it, whether it's my fault or not, I'm always the one that's reaching out. I'm always the one that's reaching out. Why don't you come to me? Okay? That's what it is. And I don't even remember exactly what it was that they was getting into it with. But a lot of the things that these beefs that Caesars has, it's over something small that could have been, could have been, you know, aired out and figured out, you know, once the, the heat, once the Y'all got common heads. That's what it is. Common heads prevail. You know what I'm saying? And that it, it, it all comes down to ego and pettiness. That's what it comes down to. Okay? And um, pride. There you go. And so, you know, um, they was having a little dinner for a walk because he was trying to tell Jess that it was going to be a tour instead of just a one-day night stand, um, tour date or whatever in Cleveland. And he was scared of what her reaction would be, but she was all here for it when he finally told her the truth. And so... At this point, right, listen, at this point, what was I saying? Puma told, to, um, what's his name, Caesar to come outside so he could talk to him about, you know, reconnecting with Richard. And he, of course, Caesar really wasn't here for it. And Richard showed up, but he did not see Caesar. He didn't even get out the car. And Puma said, no, nah, this ain't what's going to happen. You know, Richard was like, he's just not ready. It is what it is. Okay, cool, fine. He was cool with it. He wasn't upset or nothing. I was like, you know, this is a mature version of, oh, shit. I mean, well, Richard that we seeing. And I like it. Moving on from that, they go back into the restaurant. We got Sky that's there. She comes late. Of course, she makes a toast to, um... Uh, uh, walk and then she trying to make another talk trying to put people's secrets and stuff out there trying to make it seem like because she got it off the blogs that 
Kitty and Rick, uh, Ryan from Black Ink Crew Chicago, now man, is supposed to be fucking around. And she was like, oh, so you got this because of what? I went down to an Essence Fest by myself and I just so happened to run into him, probably took a picture and that was it. Girl, whatever. See, Sky's on here to start trouble. That's all it is. Like, she got this whole ball running, okay? Now, earlier... Puma, not Puma, but Caesar was in there drinking that champagne, okay, at the shop. And then here comes Ted. He's in his feelings or whatever because he's talking about, you know, he had to confront Jims on something. Never really said exactly what it was that happened that went down between them. But, you know, he's upset at the fact that Tati and Jim is working, um, fucking around with each other and they're his employees. Okay. And I'm sitting here like, are you serious? Then at this goddamn, um, thing... He gets in his feelings because who brought it up? Was it Walter or somebody that brought it up? Either way, you know, Sky brought it, started the ball running. Somebody else brought up uh, 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 Tati and Jim. And, you know, at the end of the day, I don't even feel like going back and forth about what it is. Teddy, you keep on saying, y'all not going to keep playing with me. Y'all not going to keep playing me and all this stuff. Why are you upset? At the fact that these two, who are your employees, as you say, are having a relationship. When you also had relationships with your employees, you had relationships after you was with Tati. You fucking with London, okay? She is also an employee, so it's okay for you to do it, but it's not okay for her to do it. And at the same time, I want to be 100% pissed at him and be on Tati's side 100%. But Tati, you acted like a jealous bitch when he moved on from your ass too, okay? But now he acting like a jealous Jealous pussy towards you. All right. And let me tell you something, Teddy. That was not a good look. You look fucking fraudulent. Okay. You look weak. You look like a bitch. You look like a pussy because you mad because the pussy that you fucked over, you know, um, is moved on to somebody that works with you. Okay. You fucking with people that work with her. You've done that in her face. Okay. So what's the difference? What's the difference? That double standard ass shit got to fucking go. Quit playing with me. Quit playing with me. What, you going to hit the girl? You going to threaten the girl? You going to threaten to fire them because they living their life? You with London, right? Why are you worried? Or you fucking on whoever you fucking on. Why are you worried? Because you still got feelings? Because you can't be mad enough and say, look, I fucked up and I still got feelings for you? That's what it is. So you want to be a child and you want to take it out on anger and all this stuff? That's childish as shit, okay? And then you're throwing out all these threats or whatever. Boy, grow the fuck up, okay? You pussy. Like, Ted, I actually used to be okay with him when the show first came on. But now he just turned out like, niggas get money and shit. Niggas start losing weight or whatever. Get they bulk up and all that stuff. And niggas just really start feeling themselves, okay? He was feeling himself in the beginning, but he really feeling himself now, okay? And I just don't understand it. Like, how you getting upset because she moved on? Like, you moved on too, right? Is that right? Okay, like, come on, y'all both doing the same thing to each other. Bitch, I felt offended as shit when Scott was like, you a Capricorn to talk to you. I said, shit, Capricorn, Ugh, no. But, um, girl, some people that, some of the most fucked up people are Capricorns that I found out that I can't stand. I'm like, damn it, you must be a goddamn December Capricorn because, ugh. No, okay, and I don't even say that. No, nah, and I ain't saying that about all my December Capricorns because my girl Rox is a December Capricorn, so you know she excluded. She wasn't my good Judy, so don't do that. But you know, some of y'all fucked up. I'm just gonna say that, all right. But um, anyway, yeah, I'm just sitting here like this is trash. Quit playing with me, y'all ain't gonna play with me, y'all ain't gonna play. What did they play with you by? He never said exactly what they did to him. Fuck, that's it. Boy, if y'all don't get up out of here, that was Black and Crew. Y'all tell me how y'all feel, and I'll see y'all later. First of all, let me tell you something. It was bogus as hell before I get off of here. When they said that they was going to go down there to Cleveland to support um, um, Walter, Q was getting all happy. They was like, yeah, we ain't making it to Memphis, but I'm sure they going to go to Cleveland. And then here goes season. I'm going to get a mansion, and uh, everybody going to go except for Q, Mike, Rock, and Crystal, because y'all got a man in the shop. I said, ain't that about a bitch? You could have told us this privately. Send a group text or whatever. But anyway, that's the end of the episode. Y'all tell me how y'all feel, and I'll see y'all later. Peace.